in the spring. She wants to attend graduate school to get a Master of Fine Arts in Creative Writing, or maybe Peace Corps Teach for America. Um, you can follow her on Twitter at JM Petty, and she will be reading, uh, her story will be um, from No Safe Harbor, which is a long form essay, but it's part of the Invictus Project for this year. So, we love Jessica right now. Ready, kiddo. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys a story about my road trip down to Orlando, Florida. Uh, so I was driving down to Orlando from Muncie, Indiana, uh, which is about a 15-hour drive with one of my best friends named Zach. Uh, it had been an extremely excruciating winter in more ways than one, and uh, mostly on an emotional level for me. For him, he had an extreme case of uh, seasonal effectiveness disorder, so we were both we were both going between feeling bouts of numbness and extreme depression at the same time. Um, so I turned to him, and at this point we had driven all through the night, and I said, uh, we were saying anything basically to just keep ourselves awake. So I turned to him and I said, uh, who do you think screws a person up more, their parents or the first person they fall in love with? Um, <laughs> So, <laughs> so uh, I didn't expect him to really understand what I was talking about, even though Zach is the person that I attribute to closest to being a soulmate to me. Um, and that's because Zach doesn't ever really fall in love. He goes through bouts of infatuations, um, and you know, the next weekend he goes to a bar and falls in infatuation with somebody else. So. Uh, and also because his parents were much more laissez-faire than my parents were in raising me. Um, those are really the only big differences between the two of us. Aside from that, we both grew up in uh, upper suburban middle class households. Um, our parents were both still married. Uh, we both had a major case of wanderlust. Um, so he turns to me and, uh, and I was explaining to him uh, why I felt this way. Um, I said that my parents had basically a perfect marriage, which is a very upper middle class thing to say, um, but I truly believe it. Uh, and I have told my parents throughout my years that they have ruined me for all other relationships in my life. Um, so I refuse to settle down for anything less than perfect. Um, <laughs> but because of that, um, it gave me this sort of perverse love for falling in love. Uh, and because of that, <laughs> and because of that, um, I fell in love with the first boy that ever gave me any sort of attention. Um, his name was Luke, and we met when we were 15. And ever since that day, it had been about five years of an on-again, off-again mess of a relationship, uh, which ended that previous New Year's. Um, Zach knew all of this, um, for the most part. So that's when he turns to me and says, uh, but you loved him. And... Uh, I was quiet for a couple minutes, and he was like, he said, um, uh, love can't tear you up that completely. And I, again, was quiet for a couple minutes, and I, <laughs> uh, I was quiet again for a couple minutes, and um, do I know what love is when it's never been reciprocated? Um, so he turned to me and said, I'm in love with Matt. Matt was his boyfriend that he had been dating for the past two months, but the L word had never been brought out before. And we had never really talked about the concept of love before. And so, um, and as we were nearing the Florida border, he asked me if I wanted to be in his bridal party with him. He said he didn't know when or where he was going to get married, but he had actually asked Matt to marry him. Um, and I all of a sudden felt this sense of anger and jealousy, which are the types of emotions that immediately let you know that you are the most horrible person on the surface of the earth. <laughs> And as I was sitting there thinking and wondering why I was so angry and jealous, it's because I knew that I wanted what he had. I wanted a person that refused to live without me. And, uh, <coughs> and 
And I knew I wanted that because I had moved so many times in my life and I had dropped friends, whether because I had moved or because we had fallings out or things of that nature, that I felt like I was shedding my skin every two to three years and becoming an entirely different person. I, uh, <coughs> I had grown to accept the people that I loved and accept my friends as my new home instead of a physical place. Um, so as we were nearing the Florida border, I turned to him and he started talking about uh, all the vacations he took there when he was a kid and uh, how he could maybe see himself getting married in Florida, if not Indiana, um, because at that time it had not been legalized. And, uh, and I realized as I saw him smile that, um, I realized as I saw him smile that I could be that sense of permanence for him, even if it was not guaranteed to be reciprocated to me. Um, and I realized that because when you feel like you've lost your home, you really <clears throat> have two options. The first is you can leave and never look back, never come back. Or you can return year after year, even when you feel like everything has changed. And that was my story about that. Judges, Sal. Seven. Seven. Yay. You can also respond to the judges. <laughs> <laughs> what, Christine? Cassandra. Cassandra, not even close. Three. <laughs> What's your name? Jay. Jay. Yep. Seven. Thank you. Here's your next one.